You are listening to this message from Jesus Pavilion, part of the RCCG network. We hope God will meet your need after listening to this message. Let's just give honor to him. Honor is due. Let's just make our welcome. Let's make our welcome in our home at you. Let's just make our welcome. Hallelujah. Jesus, take over, take over, Jesus, take over, I cannot do it by myself, except you help me. I cannot do it by my own, except you take over, take over, Jesus take over, take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I am your vessel, nothing more. When we are done, please take all glory. We satisfy just to see Jesus glorified. Pressure Redeemer, this morning we welcome you to this online meeting. We ask Father, you take over, you take the stage, that you will speak to us, your people, Lord. Daddy, you would let us hear the word of life, word of resurrection in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, Father, that you will hide this vessel behind the cross of Calvary and that Jesus will be visible to us all in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray this morning, Lord, I will not speak of myself, but uh, you, you will speak to us, Lord. We will hear your voice clearly, Lord. That this morning, I pray, Lord, that my antenna will be connected to the satellites of heaven, Lord, and I will receive divine download in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning, church. You're welcome to church this morning. I pray this morning, this Resurrection Sunday, that indeed you will encounter the living God. The death of Christ on the cross of Calvary will not be in vain concerning you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray this morning that any and everything that that is dead, as Christ rose today, as the grave could not hold him down, nothing will be able to hold you down in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray today that today will mark a beginning of a new dawn unto each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. When I was told I was preaching today about a couple of weeks ago, I never even realized it was Easter. And while I was on my, my usual walk, prayer walk, I heard God speak to me clearly about the topic today and I could understand why in this season, why God is saying this. Um, My prayer is that the Lord will speak to you and I and he will touch us in Jesus' mighty name. This morning, I'll be speaking on the topic, rebuilding the ancient landmarks. Rebuilding the ancient landmarks. Throughout the week, I've been struggling and saying, God, is this right? Let me put, you know, 
postponed it and said, no, this is the time I want you to speak this word to my people. And this morning we'll be looking at the topic of rebuilding the ancient landmark. The word of God says in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 22, verse 28, it said the previous generation has set boundaries in place. Don't you dare move them just to benefit yourself. I've just read from the Passion Translation. The Lord says that the, the, the previous generation had set boundaries. There are boundaries that were set by God for you and I. There were boundaries that off as an individual, off as a family entity, off as a community, off as a church organization. There were boundaries God set for us. And God is saying that, don't you dare move it. You know, it was um, when, when the Sunday school was going on and I was saying to my husband that God, you know, the Sunday, if the Sunday school was just manufactured and given to us, I would say maybe because it was COVID while the topic of today came forth. But no, it was done, we started on the Sunday school in September because the new academic year starts in September. And so coincidentally, the topic today is happening in this period. God is saying to you and I that the previous generation, God has given us things that we should not do. God gave us the Ten Commandments, said, this do, that don't do. So where there's a consequence, there's a, a law, there's a consequence. God told us, don't remove the Asian landmark. In the book of Deuteronomy 19, 14, said, thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's, neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thy inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess in. In the olden days, they don't normally have fences, but it, it, it still happens when you go and buy a piece of plot of land. You will see there's a stone that's been put permanently into where your land stops. And in it, your, identity, your land identification will match up with the paper of your plot, will be written on it. So that was the boundary. In the olden days, they don't put fence up, but everybody knows their land. They know the parameters. They, they need to walk in there. They, they don't need to defraud each other, encroach into other people's land. And that's why the Bible says, the time of, oh, they were building this land, these ancient landmarks. He said, whoever moves in Deuteronomy 27 to 17, says, whoever moves his neighbor's boundary marker will be cursed. Then all the people will say, amen. There are consequences to us going against the rule of God. And God is saying that if any landmark is removed by anybody, there's a consequence of, of curses coming upon them. In Proverbs 23, 10 to 11, it says, Never move a long-standing boundary line or attempt to take land that belongs to the fatherless, for they have a mighty protector, a loving redeemer who watches over them and he will stand up for their cause. God is saying again to us that those, those who are, are unable to defend themselves, those who can't speak out for themselves, let's not take what belongs to them away from them. I remember, I think it was in the book of Exodus, when, when they were you know, giving uh, inheritance, ancient lands to the to these 12 tribes. And there was a, there was a tribe that had no, no sons. And the daughters rose up and said, ah, no, you can't take away our inheritance. You understand? They had no voice because if you don't have a male child there, you don't have a voice. But they stood up. They stood up for their rights that no matter the distribution of lands in there, we too, at the name of our generation, must not go away. In the book of uh, Job, Job 24, verse, he said, people move boundary marks. They still flock and tend them as shepherds. In our world today, we will see so many boundaries that have been moved. And that's why, like, we said, like the sister that was taking the Sunday school and said that there are so many things going on because we've overstepped our boundary. You'll be asking the question, why this on Resurrection Sunday? We will get there because if Christ has come to redeem us, if Christ has risen today, then we who are believers in the church, who are in the, in the body of Christ, sorry, we need to start rebuilding the ancient landmark which the world has removed. In the book of Uzziah, Uzziah chapter 5, verse 10 says, The leaders of Judah are like those who move boundary markers. I will pour my fury on them like water. Leaders in Judah were, 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 were and God is saying, this is a consequence for you removing, taking things that does not belong to you, setting, resetting the goalposts, you no, know, rewriting the law to suit ourselves. God gave us the Ten Commandments as an ancient landmark. But disobedience made us cross the line and sin against him. Sin is the transgression of the law. God gave us the term. 
do not do this, do not do that, do not do this, do not do that, do not have any other God, do not do that. God gave us that plan. As Christians, the question we need to ask ourselves this morning, yes, Christ is reading, reason. Christ is reason. Yes, he's reason. Glory to God. But can we boldly say that the joy of Christ's reason, you and I are not nailing him back to the cross every day by disobeying him, not doing what he's asked us to do. Even in this lockdown season, there are many of us that, that God has been speaking to. Are we doing what God is asking us to do, even in this lockdown season? In the book of John, 1 John 3, 4, 1 John 3, 4, it says that those who live sinful lives are disobeying God. Sin is disobedient. It's a time to search ourselves. Are we living a sinful life? You may say, I don't tell lies, I don't steal, I don't do this, I don't do that. But what other lies, are all other sins are you committing that you think that others can't see what God is seeing and God is saying, rebuild that ancient landman. Try and you know, run away from sin. The boundary set by God does not change from one generation to generation. It remains the same till Jesus comes. Till Jesus comes, the Ten Commandments is our yardstick. And God is not going to say you fulfill some part. Okay, I set it in the Old Testament. So it's not relevant for us in the New Testament. The law of the Lord is the same till eternity comes. And it's the same yardstick he would have used in the generation of, of, of Abraham that he's going to use in our generation. If we want to search ourselves this morning and ask God of a real, am I, if Christ should come today, what will happen? Am I in the process of laying, you know, nailing Christ back to the cross? First Peter chapter 1, verse 24 says, Human beings are frail and temporary like grass, and the glory of man fleeting like blossom of the field. The grass dries and wither, and the flower falls off. But the word of the Lord endures forever, and this is the word that was announced to you. And like I said, I'm reading from the Passion Translation this morning. Even though the world is frail, the world is passing away, God's word is constant, is unchangeable. If we read from Genesis to Revelation, I know some people have been asking my husband and asking people outside of church as well, asking me, oh, what, oh, we need to do something about the end time. Who tells you we are in the end time? Who tells you Christ is coming? Even Jesus said to us that he does not know the hour or the season when the, when this end time will happen. Only the Father knows it. Yes, we can see some signs that telling us it's drawing closer. And God is saying, rebuild the Asian. No, we raise my... My, my, my integrity in the world. We raise the banner of Christ in the world. My people who are called by my name, rise up from where you are and we raise the standard I have set in the world. In the book of Jude, Jude, Jude uh, Brother Jude is one of my, my beautiful uh, uh, apostles that I lo love reading about. He only wrote one chapter, but fully loaded. He said, dearly beloved friends, I was fully intending to write to you about our amazing salvation. We will participate, participate in, but felt the need instead to challenge you to vigorously defend and contend for the belief that we cherish. For God, through the apostle, has once for all entrusted this truth to us, the holy believers. The question that I want to ask you and I is that the only belief that God has entrusted to us, are we keeping the standard of it? Are we a role model of what God has entrusted to us? You know, we are saying that the, the, the field is green now. You know, it's up the opportunity that people are seeking truth because they are now realizing in the state we are that it seems that indeed there is a God. But the question to ask you and I is that, are we fully ready to defend the faith that God has given to us? If a Muslim comes to you today, if a, a, a Sikh comes to you today and says, I want to know that you're God, are we saying that we are much equipped to be able to tell them of who our God is? The time we are in now is not a time of us being a nominal Christian. God says, is it that you are hot or you are cold? Is it that you are good or you are bad? 
It's either you are right or you are wrong. It's either you are in Christ or you are out of Christ. There is no sitting down on the fence. There is no time to sit down on the fence. So God is asking you and I, who are we? What is our identity? Jesus said, I do not know you and I will spill you out. What brings recognition for us of who we are in Christ? God wants us to faithfully hold on to the ancient landmarks that allows us to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the same. God wants us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to have an unshakable faith with a clear definition, timeless standard, designable boundaries, and well-defined landmarks. Majority of us in our, in, in, out there in the world, there is no difference among us and the people out there. God is saying, rebuild the ancient landmark. In the day of old, when the apostle opened their mouth to speak, the Bible says that indeed, this one, they've been with Jesus. Are people recognizing in you and I that indeed Christ has risen for you and I? When people see you, our conduct, are they really saying that, yes, I know, this one is indeed someone who has been with the Lord. Today, we'll look at four areas that God wants us to rebuild the landmarks. God wants us to reset the boundary stones. God wants us to reestablish so that Christ Jesus can you know, reestablish the church he, he died for over 2,000 years ago. The first landmark we're going to look at is the ancient landmark of salvation. Salvation. In the book of John 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes next to the Father except true union with me. To know me is to know my Father too. You know, there's a thing going on in our day and age when you tell people, are you a Christian? They said, yes. There's, and we all know that's not a fact. You can be a church goer and may not have an encounter with God. You may be a church goer doing everything, you know, giving offering. Doing, and that lady is nice. She's very good. She's got a good act. My beloved, I've come to tell you this morning, God is saying that anyone whose name is not written in the book of life, I do not know you. So you can come to Jesus' pavilion, you can go to redeem church, you can go any any ministry. The only identity that guarantees the finished work of Calvary for us is that landmark of salvation. If you are not being born into Christ Jesus, you don't have the assurance that on that last day, if the trumpet sounds, or if rapture happens today, that you have a safe place with God. Lennox, I believe it was Lennox, uh, the guy that sang, born of the water, spirit and the blood, to thank God and born again. The guy stated clearly, what does it mean to be born again? We are born of the water, we are born of the spirit, and we are born by the blood of Jesus. Jesus has shed the blood. He's risen from that initial sacrifice. Now, the step for us is to go into being born of the water. Of baptism, and that's the ancient lama that God wants us to erase in the book of Acts. I believe it's Acts chapter 8. I believe we did it recently. When Philip and the Ethiopian Enoch, when God sent Philip to the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian, Ethiopian Enoch was reading the word. And Philip, as does he understand what he's reading, said he's looking at it. And after you no know, leading him to Christ, taking him through to make him to understand what he was reading, and many more, he said to me, He said, to, What stops you from being baptized? He said nothing. He baptized him into Christ, his identity, straight off to say that, yes, not only have I given my life to Christ, but I've raised the ancient black man that said I have been born, purchased into the barrier, into, into the death barrier and the restoration of the Lord Jesus Christ. The question I have for us church this morning, are you being bought into the death, into the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? The church as well needs to rebuild the ancient land as we as individuals and the homes need to build, rebuild the ancient landmark of, that, of, of salvation. Baptism into Christ at the gate into the kingdom. The Bible says in the book of 
of Romans 8 1. So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. The church has lost it. We lead people to Christ, but do we disciple them? God is saying to the church, church, rebuild the ancient landmark of discipling people into Christ. Rebuild the ancient landmark of baptizing them into the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Rebuild the foundation. And how do we rebuild it? When we call Sunday school, people keep quiet. They don't ask questions. They don't even, I'm not even sure if people you know, get involved in it. We come to Bible study on, on Tuesdays. How many people turn up? Even when they turn up asking for contribution and question, we keep quiet. The only way we could go, grow is to know the word of God. If you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus always speak, talk to the multitude, teaches them, disciples them. And he takes the 12 aside and teach them deeper because they need to be buried, you know, baptized, saved into his death, burial, and resurrection so that they can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. The time the church needs to come back and return, you no know, believers class, some of us who, who gave our lives a long time ago, we will still remember from Baba Egin and Co. We had Bible correspondence that helped us to grow in our faith. We had things we would do with some, and we get on that so we can grow more to be like Christ. God is saying it is my time that we rebuild the foundation, even during this lockdown. As fathers, as mothers, God is saying it is time for you to rebuild the salvation of your home. It is time to build, rebuild the word altar. I remember growing up, it is a must in the morning. In the morning, we will say our Bible study, uh, our memory verse. And we will pray. In the evening, we sit down to do proper Bible study. The whole family. I come from a large family. We sit down every evening. If my dad you know, does the bell, you don't come out, you are in trouble. We sit down, we study. From a man that is not a believer, it was a lot of sacrifice. God is calling fathers and mothers, rebuild the altar of salvation in your own. It is time that we say to the children, enough of watching movies, playing games. Let's sit down and let's memorize the memory verse. Because God is saying, rebuild this ancient landmark now. Because there's going to be a time you are not going to be there where they will need the word that you have embedded in them. And get them prepared to be baptized into the death the burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Galatians 3, 27 says, it, it was faith that immersed you into Jesus, the anointed one. And now you are covered and clothed with his anointing. It's time that we get our families, our children, to be, to be clothed in the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Romans 6, 17 to 18 says, And God is pleased with you. For in the past you were servants of sin, but now your obedience is heart deep and your life is being molded by truth through the teaching you are devoted to. And now you celebrate your freedom from your former, former master, sin. You have left its bondage and now God's perfect righteousness holds power over you as his loving servant. Can that word be said that, your, that the old master, sin, has no, no road in our lives? The Bible says we strive to work perfection on a daily basis. Are we working towards perfection in our homes? The revival is coming, it's already in the land. People are saying, let things return to normal. My beloved, I want to tell you this morning, by the time the lockdown is shifted, it is for you and I to step into the abyss that God wants to bring back into his kingdom. But in order for us to be a qualified representative of Christ, we need to start during this period of lockdown or rest to rebuild the ancient land of salvation in our own so that the revival starts from inside our home back into the world. There are husbands and wives that need to sit down and talk it through and return back to God and ask for salvation for their home, for their children, for their husband. God is saying it is now time that as a family unit we will rebaptize back into Christ Jesus so that the death of Christ 
his burial and resurrection and his shed blood will not be in vain. In vain. The Bible says in the book of Acts, Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, dear, dear friends, let me give you clearly the heart of the gospel that I have preached to you, the good news that you have heartedly received and on which you stand. For it is through the revelation of the gospel that you were being saved. If you fasten your life firmly to the message I have taught you, unless you have believed in vain, for I have stored, shared with you what I have received and what is of utmost importance. The Messiah died for our sin, fulfilling the prophecies of the scripture. He was buried in a tomb and was raised from the dead after three days, as foretold in the scripture. We can never remove the ancient landmark of the need to be baptized as a family unit, baptized by the Holy Spirit, into the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were baptized to be free from sin by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is now time for us as families to look back and say, if God should bring his manuscript or marking scripts this morning, would he say that I, as a father, I have obeyed God according to his word in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. And the Bible says, and for this reason, shall the father sit at the head of the table and he'll begin to tell the children, this is the reason why we do this, why we do that. The salvation of our home, of our children, of our family is in the hands of the head of the family. I know because the family unit is being scattered all over the world. There are fathers in Nigeria, there are mothers in Nigeria, the children may be in Nigeria or whichever nation. But God is still saying there is no excuse for you as the priest of your home not to rebuild that ancient landmark of salvation of your family. It is time you rise back and say, we're taking it back. I have put, put things above God. But God, I am returning because I know I will give account as an individual. We have the social media. We have the network. Rather than playing, doing things, going on, on, on Instagram, doing TikTok and all this stuff, house party, why don't we spend that time and call our family and have that time of rebuilding the altar of salvation in our home and saying, God, I know time, distance is not an excuse. I have a part to play. And on that last day, you will ask, that ancient mark, mark of teaching my family the truth about God as I kept it. Number two, we will look at the ancient landmark of acceptable worship. According to the book of Colossians 2.23, which things are indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in any honor to satisfying of the flesh. God wants us, you and I, to raise altars of worship. If you are not intentional or practice worship in the secret closet of your home, there is nothing you can offer when you come outside. Majority of us, we are confusing our children because they see a different person outside and they see a different person at home. Let's be intentional in building the altar of worship. Let your children know this is the reason why we worship the Lord. How do we worship God? Majority of us, we're online today. Our children are not online. Listen to the word of God. God is saying, go back. Rebuild this ancient land. Now. We grow as a family. Sorry, please. The book of John chapter 4, verse 24. He said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The question I need to ask us, to ask the choir, to ask us as individuals, are we indeed offering a worship that comes from our sincerity of heart? Are we worshiping God in spirit and in truth? Or we, are we worshiping God because it's, it's something that I know is numb, is what, how I, what I grew up into, and that's what we need to offer? David said, I will not give to God that which does not cost me. A time for, uh, for us as believers to go back to the hymns and sing deep hymns of worship. The, the fathers of old, 
New works it means to pen down the worship, the hymns that talk about the wholesomeness of God. We heard these hymns of such as Amazing Grace. We heard so many songs, no song, that takes us back. You know, the, but Matt Redman said something. He said, I'm going back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, God, are we showing our family unit that our worship is all about God? Or are we in the self-worship stage? God is saying, come back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. The change in our society now. God is looking for the true worshippers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. When was the last time you were singing that hymn or singing that song and tears were wailing down when you look at the, behold the beauty of the Lord our God. Christ is risen, but he's saying, I am looking for my true worshippers. God said something. We don't only worship in song. There are several ways we worship. God is saying, according to Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 to 5, and in the process of time it came to pass, that came brought of the fruit of the ground, an offering unto the Lord, and Abel. He also brought the firstling of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord has respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, was very angry. And his countenance fell. The offering that you are offering unto God, is it out of respect to God? The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. God is very specific on the offering, on how to bring the offering. We don't bring blood sacrifice now. Christ has paid it. But when we bring our offering to God, it must be with sincerity of heart. God is saying, rebuild the worship, altar of worship. Are we raising the altar of worship in our home? When, Sol when Solomon dedicated the offer, or, 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 or the, 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 the temple, the Bible says he offered a thousand bull upon the altar. And when he offered it, the cloud of glory of God came down. And God had to say, no, nobody could stand in there. Are you building the altar of worship in your home? Is your home a heaven of the glory of God? God said, rebuild the altar of worship. When we rebuild the altar of worship, there is no harm that diseases, sickness, ailments can stand in the place. Because the cloud of glory is already dwelling in your home. And because it's already there, the light of the glory of God is spreading into the community. The Bible says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it being dead, yet speaks. Is your offering of worship speaking? God wants us to build up the altar of prayer, prayer, a prayer, our prayer altars. Do we have a prayer altar in our home? God said, rebuild the ancient landmark of prayer. The Bible says, if the people who are called by my name. Prayer is not something you do casually and you rush out. Prayer, there is no how you will raise an altar of worship that you will not raise an altar of prayer. Because it's the life living altar that God consumes. God is saying to us this morning, yes, I have reason, but I'm looking for my family altars in my homes. Where are they that I may consume it? God is asking you and I, rebuild this period, rebuild the family altar. Rebuild the altar of prayer. Rebuild the altar of marriage. Rebuild the altar of homes. And as you are building the family altar, are you building your personal altar? Because some of us, we don't even pray. And God is saying, raise up the ancient landmark. If the church did not build the community altar when Peter was thrown into prison, 
The church will not gather to pray at the altar and the glory of God will come down that the angel will go into the prison to release Peter. Peter was sleeping. When we look at the second verse of those who had the same encounter, the Bible talks about Paul and Silas. When the time of restriction comes, said they prayed, they sang, and the glory of God came down. Are we looking at the things that we cannot do? Are we looking at there is no money coming in? Are you looking at I don't have a paper? And the work job I'm doing for all this year. And they are saying that it's only those who have paper that can claim the 80% from the government. And I know I don't qualify for it. Are you raising that altar and saying, God, I am worshipping you. Because I know no matter what happens, salvation is here. Because Christ is risen. God is asking you and I, raise the altar of worship. Where is the altar of where I can come? You know, you know, one of my classic character, David, there is nothing on a daily basis. The Bible says that David, he worshipped God like a madman. God is saying, I'm looking altar, I'm looking for altars of worship that kind of habits. God is saying, we should re-raise the altar, we should rebuild the ancient landmark of fellowship, of partnering with God. I remember in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says at the cool of day, God will come down and have fellowship. You and I were created for fellowship with God. Fellowship with God, fellowship with one another, fellowship with the family. Matthew 16, 18 says, I give you the name Peter, a stone. And this truth of who I am will be bedrock foundation on which I will build my church. My legislative assembly and the power of death will not be able to overpower it. Are we raising the altar of fellowship with God? The Holy Spirit is always coming. God is always coming and saying, daughter, son, I'm waiting for that fellowship with you. If we don't go back to raising the altar of fellowship through the world, the altar of worship, we will not hear clearly for God. God is saying, rebuild the ancient landmark of fellowship. God wants to establish his word. God wants to, to use you and I as his extension of his hand to bring healing to the world. But if we ourselves are not building those ancient landmarks that God can consume to send out his glory, his power into the world, how can our land receive healing? A powerful man of God said, give me Scotland or I die. Are we fellowshipping with God that our voice raised to him? And when we speak, say, yes, yeah, as you desire, I am doing for you today. I say, give me United Kingdom. Give me all those children. Give me those wayward children. Give their life to me, Lord. We know about the Welsh Revival. Where a, a land that was filled with immoralities and by the heart cry of a man of God, give me this land or I die. And righteousness exalt the nation. The fear of God was instilled back into the world. God is saying it's uh, it depending on you and I to make sure this revival in this season is being fulfilled. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and 34 where Peter replied, repent and return to God. And each or one of you must be baptized in the name of the Father, the Anointed One, and have your sins removed. 47, sorry, then you will take hold of the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we return, God said, when we return to the place of fellowship, when we return to the altar of fellowship, then we will take hold of the gift of the Holy Spirit. They were continually filled with praises to God, enjoying the favor of the, all, all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily, those who were coming to life. If the believers of old did not obey the instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ. The greater fellowship they went into would never have been manifested. Are we fellowshipping with God? I'm not even coming 
to the Bible talking about not neglecting the fellowship of one another. Are we fellowshipping in the presence of God as a family entity? Because that's the basis. Because the moment we correct what is wrong in the family, healing in the land is going to take place. Are we rebuilding the family altar? God is saying, rebuild the ancient landmark. I want to see Christ be put back into homes. There are many families this morning. God is saying you need to make restitution. I want to heal the land. The purpose of my rising, my death, burial, and resurrection is to bring healing. And the healing comes from inside and it flows outward. Rebuild the altar that God may dwell and fellowship with us. We, God gave us a challenge. I'm talking to myself as well. So that we can fellowship together. How many of us said genuinely we, we went along and we contributed to fellowship? Because when we fellowship together, we get ideas. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy. Are we walking worthy of the fellowship of the Lord? Of the vocation wherewith you were called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. One, by the Lord said to us, let's walk worthy. Are we walking worthy of someone Christ has paid the price for? Can we genuinely say, Yes, we might deceive ourselves, but let the Holy Spirit search us. Let the search light of God search us today, this morning. And say, are we worthy, walking worthy of being called a child of God? Say, for bearing one another. There is no how we will gather where that will not, offense will not come. Offense will come in the home. God said, we should forbear one another in love. Are we forbearing one another? Or is that a full stop to say, I'm not going there again. They've offended me. Or I'm not talking to my wife again because she's offended. I'm not talking to my husband. It's time for me to move on with my life. For bearing one another. God said we should rebuild the ancient landmark of fellowship. Keep the unity in the spirit. Are we a peacekeeper? God said we need to rebuild this it's because these are the things God wants us to be rid of. Are we one who keeps the unity of the spirit? Or are we a scattering bull? You may say, Pastor Missy, this is Resurrection Sunday. It's a word of life. This is the word of life because God is calling him, us back to draw closer. God does not want us to worship him from afar. He's saying, my children, come closer. The world may do it. We are not in the world. We are to be different. And one thing we never need to forget, irrelevant of who we are, we are all united into the body of Christ. We're going to look at the final landmark before we pray. The ancient landmark of holiness, holy living, Christ-like holiness. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Are we renewing our mind? What does it mean to be holy? Bible says in the book of 1 John 5, 19, and be not conformed. Are we conforming to the world? You know, in the, in, in the early 80s, 
you can easily distinguish those who are the born again Christians or believer in Christ and the world. But today, let's look out. Let's look out into our society, even off in the home. Can we genuinely say anybody that sees us can say that, yes, this is someone that's been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that this one stands for truth. First John 5, 19 says, And be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and accept and perfect will of God. Are we an example to the world? Or we are not different from the world. I'm not saying dressing tattered and what's it called. In our conduct. I remember the last job I left in December. There were lots of frauds riddling the organization. And between March 2019 and December 2019, all of the fraudulent loophole I blocked it was unbelievable. And by the time I realized the level of atrocity going on, it was unbelievable. They brought a new CEO and they were talking to one of the colleagues. And the, the colleague, I did this guy, someone I've been trying to minister Christ to. And he said, Oh, they were talking, I just don't know what they were talking about. But he now asked the question. He said, Is Ronke part of the fraud ring? He said, Ronke, forget about it. You don't know her that the only head of asset we have had in this organization that is not part of the fraudulent activity is Ronke. The, the organization has been in existence the year I was born, 1974. Can we say we are Christ-like? Are we conforming to the world? I've shared many stories, but for the sake of those who are new among us, if someone should be already be a Mueller in the United Kingdom, for the few that are working, the temptation comes every day, every day, every day. But for one thing, what for God? Are we holy? The Bible says in 1 Peter 4.4, 4, they marvel that you no longer rush to join them in the excessive of their corrupt lifestyle. And so they vilify you. It's the word marveling. Okay? Forget about church. Forget about it. You need to make the money now. What shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? It is time for us to return and rebuild the landmark of holiness. Christ like holiness. The devil gave Christ so many options to compromise. He said, do this, and I will give you this. What shall it profit a man? I'm not sure who I'm speaking to this morning. God is saying, it is time to turn back. The way that seems right unto men, at the end of it, is the way of destruction. My prayer over everyone this morning is that nobody will be sown to the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. There are many things out there that is attracting us. There are friends. The, the word we read in the book of First, it said, look, stop. No, they marvel that you no longer, longer rush to join them. Are your friends, are your community marveling that you're no longer rushing to join them in the evil deeds, in things that compromise the standard of God? For you and I to be a representative of God, we need to rebuild the ancient landmark of holiness. The book of Titus chapter 2, 11 to 12. For the grace of God that brings salvation as a prayer to all men, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Godly living. Can you and I boldly say no to the temptation of the enemy? Are we teaching our children to say no to the options that are out there? God says, rebuild the ancient landmark during this period. 
The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. What we do not teach our children in Christ, the world will help us to shape and form them. I know children in worse community than we are, but yet they never compromise because the standard of holy living and righteousness has been built and uh, has been laid and built on in Christ Jesus. I speak to women this morning. Are we rising up to our position? Are we staying on that prayer altar, altar and interceding for our children? And say this one that God has given to me. Our fathers working with mother. Because if the, if, the, if the home front is not united, we cannot build children who are holy. Who can say no? If we build confusion in the home, we are destroying the ancient nightmare of our next generation. Until father and mother comes together and say in Christ we will raise these children to represent him. So that the sacrifice of Christ on the cause of Calvary will not be in vain. Or are we leaving the gadget to shape them for us? Zion is calling you and I to a higher praise. God is saying, I, I want to give you, I am preparing you as the army for this revival that's already hit the land. But until we start purging ourselves inwardly, we can't go out to represent God. Because the accuser of God will ask you, who are you? Or would you say, I come to you in the name of Christ Jesus that by Adi Boye preaches? No. We need to raise that altar. We need to put the sword of fire in the hands of our children to live holy. No compromise. Leviticus 11.44 says, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourself, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any manner of crippling things, that creepeth upon the head. Are we defiling ourselves? Whether we like it or this morning, except we don't want to be honest. What we did in Sunday school this morning, there are many people on the altar that are struggling with it. Let's be honest. Let's shame the devil. But God is saying, it's stretching and say, I want to rebuild the altar of holiness. Come to the cross today that I may purge you. It is only Christ that can give us victory over those little, little sins that you believe nobody sees. One of my spiritual father was telling me about a pastor. We were talking and he was saying, look, even if you stand, the devil will still come and try you. But it is this power to be able to say no, according to Titus 2. Ladies in this pavilion, are we teaching our children to say no to things that would defile them? Are we teaching our daughters? Because according to Titus, we say, older woman, teach the next generation. Are we teaching the next generation of holiness, of what it means to keep the value of Christ? There are many of us, we call ourselves believers, uh, born-again Christians on this altar. But let's touch ourselves. Those dodgy deals we are doing, God is saying, rebuild the altar of holiness. Those cutting corners going around the bends, God is saying, come and build the altar of holiness. I've never known God to forsake his own. At the nick of time, God will always make a way. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2 says, In writing you this letter addressed to the community of God throughout the city of Corinth, for you have been made pure. God has made you poor by the sacrifice of Christ on the cross of Calvary. He has risen to prove that the price he paid for your purity was not just in vain. It is real. Set apart in the anointed one, Jesus, and God has invited you to be his devoted and holy people. God is calling you and I this morning 
to the time of holy living with God. God wants us to erase the ancient landmark this morning. I have not come to speak of myself, but I've come to speak as God has told me to say to his people. I don't know why, but I'm just having this strong feeling that there's some husbands, there's some wives that need to go back and rebuild the foundation of their wife, of their marriage, sorry. God is saying, rebuild that ancient landmark. Bible says, husband, love your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. It's not what we have made it in the world today. It's this time we rise up and say, no, we stand for Christ. Irrelevant of all. My, my, my home will be a model of the bride that Christ is coming back for. We are meant to set the pace for the world. God said, rebuild the altar. No matter what we go, may go going on in our homes, in our family, in our lives. It's only what we permit the enemy to have access to that would he will get him. Because what God of God says he has given us all the authority in heaven. And it's only what we permit in our home. If there's no peace in the home, it's because we allow it to, to try. Like jokingly, I always say, no parking, no waiting, no stopping. God wants us to rise up this morning. And be begin to, to rewrite the destiny. In the book of Esther, Esther chapter 8, verse 8, that was the word God gave to me earlier this year. He said, You also write your own. What is that thing that is not according to what God says, the ancient landmark that God has, has said? God said, use your mouth, use your, you write your own, begin to speak life. Repeal the altar. Paraventure, the mouth you have is that all you see is confessing negativity. God is saying, rebuild the ancient landmark of peace, of life in Christ. Speak life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Speak the word out, speak the word out. In conclusion, as I bring this home, in conclusion, irrelevant of the century, the decade, the culture, the tradition, the community we are in, the word of God never and has never, never, and will never, never change. The word of God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Malachi 3, 6 says, I am the Lord. I change it not. God is constant. And when the day we all get to the judgment seat, it is the same yardstick that God is going to use to judge every single one of us. Rebuild the ancient landmark. James 1.17 says, The father of life, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is the same. Always there's no variableness in turning. And as our motto slogan in the Redeemed and in Jesus' pavilion, Hebrews 13, which you all know it often, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God wants to build the altar, the ancient landmark this morning of healing. To bring healing to our land, to bring healing to our home. But it's determinant on you and I. There's some of us, God is saying, you need to build the altar, the ancient landmark of forgiveness. Because that malice, that unforgiveness, not take you anywhere. Because Christ has paid the price for us. If it's, if it's for the error you and I have committed, we are not justified to stand before Christ. And the Bible says that they will offend us 70 times 7. Say, but forgive your brother. If you forgive someone 70 times 7 every day, and someone offends you 70 times, and you now multiply by then you too, there's something in you, you need to check yourself. God is saying, I, I, I said I will not speak to you again. There are many people in the world doing that, but we are not of the world. God is saying we should rebuild that altar of unity and that altar of peace. 
of which Christ represents. This Resurrection Sunday, let's look at, let's look deep and tell God, search me. What do I need to rebuild in my home? What do I need to rebuild in my life? Where, where have I gotten it wrong? I'm not saying you don't watch movies. Don't, you can't be like me. Someone was asking me this one. What's your favorite movie? I asked my husband, which movie? Is the person that's watching movie that they'll be asking, what's your movie? Let's put the movie aside. God is craving for fellowship with you and I. God is craving for worship. God is craving for that altar of salvation in our home. So that the community can come into when we open up the house church. Our house is meant to be the cubicle of resurrection in our community. People should be able to know. I know that the Olayemis are there. Let me enter. So I know I, that when I enter into that home, there is going to be deliverance. There is going to be healing. But that means saying that because the altar is alive, it's being ignited. God saying, I need you. I need you in this season for the revival that is already in the land. And some of us, we need to bridge our tongue. Yes, this is I am. There's nobody that cannot change. This is how I've been from a child. God is saying, it's time of rebuilding. Come into my secret place. It's the value and moral that we put into our homes, into our children, that they would take back out into the world to be a representative. And it's the values we put into our home that the world will see and want to know the God we serve. As we're taking them to piano lessons, taking them to what they call, let's build the altar of value in Christ Jesus. Let's begin to pray this morning. I just first, I want us to go and begin to ask God. For adventures since I've been speaking, the Holy Spirit has been ministering to you in one area. Why don't you begin to speak to the Lord about it this morning? Because we want to invite the world in the church. We've lowered the standard of the church. Rather than the world coming towards the church, the church is drawing towards the world. Why don't you begin to tell Acts God this morning? How have I moved the ancient landmark? In which areas have I compromised? I don't want the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ Jesus to be in vain. Where have I failed in my family altar as the priest of my home? What excuses have I gave, gave, been given, sorry? There's some of us, we say we are busy, we are busy. By the time you look at what you are doing, you are playing games. You are doing things that have no eternal value. God said it's time to draw closer. God says, I've always come. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to ignite that conversation, that fellowship, that, that atmosphere of worship. God say, come back. I hope we are praying this morning. Let's begin to pray and ask the Lord, draw me closer to you, O Lord. Draw me closer to you. Yes. We are going to tell, pray and ask God this morning. Let every stone that stands in the way for me rebuilding the ancient man as the as the stone upon the tomb of Christ was rolled away. Lord, this morning, by the power of your Holy Spirit, roll them away in the name of Jesus. Every evil stone, the stone of the world, stone of comp compromise, run away from my life, from my family today, Lord. We want to be the family that represents Christ. I hope we are praying. 
Let's ask the Lord this morning. Let the light of your resurrection shine upon every dark area in our lives. That we may rebuild the ancient landmark of values that you have given to us from Genesis to Revelation and even up to this age. Smith Bucos will say, he says so that I, I become uncomfortable in the place of prayer. I put I go and kneel on rocks so that I can pray true. Why don't you ask the Lord to shine his light this morning? Why don't you pray and ask God this morning? Let the same power of resurrection that raised Jesus Christ from the dead begin to quicken every dead areas of my life, of your life, and bring life anew into you and your loved ones in Jesus' name. Why don't you begin to pray and ask God that daddy, we have made up our mind, we will rebuild the ancient, I am, I, I think, as a priest of my home, I'm taking back the reign from the devil. I am taking back the, the, the leading of leading my family, of building the altar. As mothers, as women, we are taking back the lead. We are raising our young children. We are raising our daughters. We are teaching them the value of holiness. We are teaching them the value of worship, the value of fellowship, the value of what it means to be saved. We are rebuilding those altars today. We will not confess what is wrong, but we will turn it around by the power of the Holy Spirit. We easily confess what is wrong in the home or what is wrong in one's family. But no, let the God is showing you and I that we may raise the altar of prayers for them. God said, rebuild the ancient landmark. We keep on saying we are in the dispensation of grace. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. I hope you are blessed by this message. Visit our website for further information. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook or even subscribe free on YouTube. God bless you real good.